So basically, I think the first thing is forget about real estate for the moment. I always tell people when you're trying to figure out exactly what you want to do, you kind of have to ask yourself what kind of life you want to live. <laughs> Yeah, kid. Welcome, welcome to back to another episode of Smells Like Cappy with Handsome. I'm your host, Charles Moyarov, aka the Handsome Home Buyer. By the way, if you have not joined my text platform, there it is right near there. Very proud of myself. That I even figured out how to get this thing to scroll. Scrolling across the bottom. Got a ton of one-on-one -on -one engagement in there. People hit me up. We talk about things, questions. We're going to do a Q&A, talk about all things real estate, investing, developing, you name it. I don't know what they're going to ask me. I've never met these gentlemen, but I'm excited to do it. Uh, obviously, this podcast and every podcast is sponsored by Cardinal Financial, but not just Carlo Financial, Sal Rizzolo, Carlo Financial out in the Patchogg office. He's the man. Nobody knows where he is. He's MIA right now, but word on the street is he will be appearing in time for the Workaholics event, which is going to be popping off on February 2nd. Everybody in real estate should be there. It's going to be a banger of an event. Obviously, if you have a house you want to sell, I want to buy it. 516-777 sold. So today we got a first guest, Felipe Cabrera. That's perfect. Thank you. Did I say it right? I got like a good, the good roll, the good Cabrera. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and I mixed it with like an Italian thing. I got my arm doing this. So, uh, Felipe, good to have you here. Thanks for coming out. So let me ask you a question. Um, uh, obviously you're on the text platform. You are one of the first three people to get back to me for, uh, for this opportunity. So I would love to get the kind of 60 second high level overview of, you know, who you are, what you do. And what can we uh, expect from you in the next 15 minutes? Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you for all the content that you put out there. Thank you for having me uh, get that out of the way. You know, all the, all the value that you give out for free everywhere, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, about me, um, 28 years old, uh, 10 years in the Marine Corps. I'm actually stationed over by West Point right now. Nice. Um, so I'm in the area, tri-state area. Um, I've been able to pick up two rental properties um in that time um we are uh i want to get into uh to the real estate world uh, deeper now that i'm leaving the marine corps um relocating to fairfield county is where i grew up and everything okay. and um I, I wanted to see get you some advice i know i've heard you uh say in podcasts before uh with byron lanzine but specifically he's from i, I rewatched his podcast a couple times um, you mentioned that if you start all over, you would become a realtor or a wholesaler. And, um, I'm kind of, uh, leaning towards one of those. I don't know if maybe you could, uh, sure. So I guess the biggest thing, right? So a, thank you for your service. I appreciate it. 10 years is, is uh, a long time. When are you, uh, when are you getting out of the Marines? April. Not, wow. Yeah. Very exciting. Good for you, man. Congratulations. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure 10 years went fast, huh? Definitely. Um, so basically I think the first thing is forget about real estate for the moment. I always tell people when you're trying to figure out exactly what you want to do, you kind of have to ask yourself what kind of life you want to live. And you have to say to yourself, Hey, listen, do I have a family? Do I want to have a family? Do I want to work a million hours? How much money is enough money? That's a big deal. Right? How much time do I want to put to work? Do I want to be in every baseball game, every soccer game, every dance recital? What do I want to do? So that's, that's a big thing that you have to ask yourself. Uh, so I guess briefly, you know, what, what is your thing? Like what kind of life do you want to have? Are you, are you currently married? Married. Uh, my wife is, uh, uh, just uh, joined the real estate uh, team okay. as an assistant. She's, uh, should be getting her license soon, taking the test and everything. She's already done with the classes and everything. So, nice. um, we're very entrepreneurial myself and my wife. Um, one of the reasons why I love the Marine Corps, I'm very grateful. It's done wonders for my life and, the structure that I, I lacked when I was younger and everything can't say enough good things about it. I wish I could stay for 20 years and retire and everything, but, um, I do want to pursue some entrepreneurship. Nice. I want to, uh, not, you know, be salary based and, you know, everything that has to do with yeah. entrepreneurship, you know, what, what makes you want to be an entrepreneur. Um, and so definitely since I was a little kid, my dad's a contractor and, um, working at, at different sites with him everywhere um, and stuff like that. And, and just having my own business, uh, being a leader, uh, mentoring uh, those uh, uh, team members under, underneath me if I'm and all that stuff that, that really uh, motivates me. Okay, perfect. No, it makes sense. So let's dive into a little bit about what, um, so the first thing you have to do is you obviously have to get the education. 
So I don't know. Have, have you had a lot of formal real estate education? Um, so I have as far as books, as far as like the realtor side, I've, I've read all a bunch of books, um, a lot, a lot, everything YouTube related, any content that I can get my hands on, um, as well as I've worked with a mentor that I've been working with a minute a few times. He does uh, luxury um, developments, build, he's a builder and um, he uh, does stuff in like the Hamptons and Jefferson County and stuff like that. And um, I picked his brain a lot as well. And so there's there's kind of both those both sides that I've I've been um, between uh, focusing on, I guess you could say, okay, builders or a realtor. So let's kind of jump into what you were saying before about uh, you know the conversation you saw with me and Byron, and and let me kind of explain what I was saying before. So there's pros and cons to so we'll look at the three things: wholesaling, like real estate investing, like fix and flip or whatever per se, and then being a real estate agent. So the thing about being a real estate agent is zero risk, right? Like you're not really, you're not putting money out there. You're not borrowing people's money. You don't have to go through the construction process. None of that. And you could still make a lot of money selling other people's uh, assets, which is good. The thing about real estate sales is it's, it's not really sales. It's marketing. So you have to be, to be a great realtor, you have to be a great marketer. Because once you have the, once you're working with a buyer, you got that buyer, they're committed to you. They're going to buy a house most likely at some point in time. It might take a month, it might take a year, it might take six months, but they're going to buy a house. If you get a listing, that house is going to sell at the right number. And at some point, if you have to do price drops or whatever it is, it's going to sell. So you're not really selling. The house sells itself at the right number. What you have to be is an amazing marketer. You have to market yourself to the point where everybody wants to work with you, either on the buy or the sell side or both. So you have to ask yourself, A, am I a great marketer? B, is that something I would really like to do? So, and again, I don't know how much money you're looking to make. If you're looking to make a hundred thousand or a hundred million a year, what makes you comfortable, how much time you have, et cetera. But, um, you know, that's the pros of being a real estate agent. Wholesaling is interesting. Like if I could have all the knowledge that I have right now and be a wholesaler and just sell paper and then buy rental properties, because at the end of the day, you want to buy rental properties, in my opinion. Like for me, rental properties are the ultimate goal because that's how you create long-term generational wealth. And that's ultimately, you know, the, the day you stop selling real estate or wholesaling real estate, the money stops coming in. But if you have rental properties, the money comes in constantly all the time, even while you sleep. So um, that's the goal. It's just a matter of, for me, and if, if that's the same for you, how do you mm -hmm. earn money? How do you earn money to put it back into rentals the exactly. fastest way possible? So you could do that being a real estate agent and selling other people's stuff with zero risk but do you want to be a realtor is the question. Wholesaling is not as easy. Like people make it out to be easy. It's not that easy because to be an effective wholesaler, A, you have to be an amazing marketer. Yes. But you also have to know everything that I know because you have to say, Hey, I'm going to wholesale this deal to Charles. And I know that this is what Charles's numbers look like. And I know that I have to get it an even better deal than that. Cause I have to be able to make the spread between what I'm paying and then what Charles is going to pay for. Right. So you have to understand market values, um, construction costs, cost of hard or private money, you know, how long you're going to have to hold the property for. And then you have to go out and market to bring those deals in and you have to constantly follow up and like beat on these people to, um, to get a deal done. You can make a lot of money being a wholesaler. I know guys that do hundreds of wholesales a year and they make a great living. And that's what they like to do. Now, if I had the ability to turn my operation into that, I would do that because I already have the skill set, right? I've spent mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of hours developing the skill set and the experience. And then I don't have to have the risk. I also don't have to manage the construction process, deal with towns, inspectors, all the bullshit that happens while you're renovating a house. And then there's the fix and flip side where, you know, you might just have the bug where you're like, listen, I love renovating stuff. I want to do it. I don't mind the risk. I get up every day wanting to buy a house, gut it, renovate it, make it beautiful, and then sell it and make money for my family. So which one do you think is you? Um, I think I, I like the realtor side. I think um, uh, I think I'm, I have some good marketing ideas. And, I, and also just the I feel like it's the most rewarding as far as, uh, like I said, I purchased twice before. And um, especially the first time the that impact that it had on me and and uh what that realtor did to get me through the finish line and everything i feel like 
being able to give that back to somebody else through one of the you know most difficult transactions probably or biggest transactions that a person has i mean i think that's very rewarding um but the reason why i, I brought up the question was also because um you know being that my wife's already doing pursuing that side would it be too risky for both of us to go in on something like that where it'd be better to diversify into uh maybe like a, uh something different um i mean listen it, it it really depends if you if you love something and you want to do it and you have a crazy passion for it and you know you're going to succeed regardless then you just go all in and you do it um so that's what i would do like if you and her absolutely love being realtors and you could be a team together and you can come up with unique ways to market i think that would be an amazing thing it's very rewarding to be able to work with your spouse and you know have that connection and have those things to talk about and have that common ground and then listen then there's people that say hey i don't want to see my spouse during the day i need my alone i need my work and personal life to be totally separate mm -hmm. and that's just how they are so what works for one doesn't work for uh for somebody else okay um i also had wrote down a couple other questions uh sure. more Maybe. specific um so for example i one of your most recent videos you were converting a two fan two bedroom one and a half bath into a three and one bath yep um so you're, you're removing half a bath but adding a bedroom i'm assuming because bedrooms are well appraised higher or is just better for the market in general what was the th thought process yes. for that so that was a two bedroom, two bath, which was weird. So we turned it into a three bedroom, one bath because three bedrooms are far more desirable than two bedrooms and they sell at a significant premium. So I looked at how many square feet. I knew that I had enough square footage to shoehorn an extra bedroom in there, took out the bath, okay. put in three bedrooms, and now it's going to be worth, you know, another hundred thousand dollars more. Okay. So with that, I, I have a, a three bedroom, one bath apartment that I was thinking about adding half a bath. Uh, in your experience, how much does half a bath, how much would that add to the value? Would it, would it not do much, you think? So it really depends. So it depends on what the construction costs are versus what, you know, the market's going to give you. More bathrooms do equal more money, but not no, always separate. and not always enough to justify the expense. So mm -hmm. what you need to do essentially is you need to run comparables. Let's say you can get three, four, five, six, three ones or four ones, and then ones with half a bath. In my opinion, a half a bath doesn't do a ton for you. If it was a full bath, then possibly, but you can't really do much in a half bath. It's more of just like, you know, a powder room type of setup. Okay. Um, and then also, I know you mentioned uh, before, and, I, and this is kind of my thought process too, um, renting where you live and then uh, own, or I forgot the, the saying, but basically you rent, right? Um, and then you obviously own a bunch of real estate but where your personal residence is that you rent. I've heard yes. you mention that. Um, do you ever feel like you're leaving any money on the table, possibly uh, every time you pay rent and maybe you could you know, be paying down some of your principal or something like that? Does that ever cross your mind? Do you think that it? No. Well, because for me, you have to, it depends on what you look at. If you define an asset, an asset is something that generates money for you, right? So a house that you live in doesn't generate anything. It's, it's an expense. So once you, you know, same thing with a car. So once you look at these things and you say, all right, I need a place to live. I need shelter. It's an expense for me. A, I like the fact that I get to, you know, I can move around. B, I don't have to put down the big down payment. I'm not handcuffed to a property that could go up and down in value. And, uh, and three, I also don't have all the heavy ancillary costs associated with, you know, maintenance and upkeep of that property. So that's really a personal decision. Now, if you're married and you have kids, it's very different. For most of the country, buying a house is good because it's like a forced savings account. Whereas most people would just blow the extra money buying, you know, sneakers and TVs and going on vacation. This helps them hopefully save for retirement. So, you know, that that's a benefit. But that's again just really a personal, a personal decision. Because I didn't own a house, I was able to take that money and then be riskier. Cause it's also when you have these big bills coming in every month, it's harder to take risks because you're like, shit, I have to pay that bill every month. Whereas mm -hmm. if you don't have those bills, you're more apt to just be like, what's going to happen? You know, my rent is $1,500 a month. It's not going to get any cheaper. Right. I'll go spend this 20 grand and try to flip a house or try to rent the house and better myself. Right. No, I'm, um... I just figured I had, I'd ask, you know, I've heard you say that I've heard Grant Cardone says that. And, 
um, makes a lot of sense, you know, to, to me, but I just, I just wanted to see maybe if you've ever maybe regretted it or had any second thoughts about that. I appreciate your feedback. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, and listen, one day I, I will buy a house. I got a bunch of big deals in the works and, um, I think at this point, but I'm 43 years old, I might end up buying myself something just to, you know, just to kind of ground myself a little bit, but Again, I spent the last 20 years breaking my ass and then the last seven years in real estate amassing a portfolio of over 100 rental properties. So at this point, if I'm doing it, it's with it's also with refinanced money, right? So mm -hmm. I'm doing deals, I'm creating equity and value, I'm refinancing out tax-free money, and then I'm going to go and then buy a piece of property with it that I really, you know, I, I kind of created the money. I didn't necessarily pay for it in that respect, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I still have the assets that are paying me all the time versus taking the hundred grand that you have and buying a house. And now you don't have that hundred grand to go invest. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what else you got? Um, no, I just, uh, hopefully uh, a year from now, you know, we could do this again or something like that. You'll, you'll be here for me for sure. Somewhere, somehow I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, let you know all, all, all where I'm at a year from now for sure. I love it, man. Listen, you know, hit me up on, on Instagram. I would love to keep hearing from you. You have my email, my information, my phone number is readily available. I would love to connect with you in a year from now and see where you are. It's very cool to see like where you started, about to be out of the Marines in, in four months and going to be uh, launching a real estate career. So just my advice to you with real estate is uh, as far as real estate sales, you just, you have to be, you have to be a savage. Like you have to be cold calling, door knocking. You have to have a plan. You have to be regimented, which I'm sure you are, and you have to be doing it all the time. Absolutely. No. And then uh, I have a quick uh, story. You know, I, I one time I was just on Realtor.com. I put in my info and then I started getting calls from a bunch of agents and um, I, three of them. I just said, oh, I'm not interested. And they just hung up. But then there was that fourth one. He's like, oh, OK, you're not interested. Well, oh, tell me about yourself. Oh, like you started doing small talk, small talk. And then next, you know, it's like, oh, wow, this person, even though I'm not ready to buy or I just made a mistake and put my phone number in, you know, the, it's planting those seeds for the future. You know, like I know you said that you're you're working on deals where you're emailing, calling people for 10 years and, and you finally <laughs> buy the house and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, no, pretty much. It's deals are in it's, it's in the follow up. Right. So it's very important to be organized as a realtor because all the deals come in the follow up and most realtors are not organized. So it's super important to have a CRM you know, time block your days, set up your goals for things you have to do, and then be calling these people every day. Like well, I just did the top 20 under 40 podcast and everybody in that group was super diligent about constantly following up, had a big sphere of influence, was constantly, you know, um, just going after people and pushing it and pushing it. And that's, that's how you convert. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. My pleasure, buddy. All the best. We'll see you uh, in a year from now. So keep in touch. Thank you so much, William.